someone. When you go to the market, do you get recognized? Do people know oh, no. it's you? No. No. Okay. But why I do say, I'm a character actor. I'm, you're not supposed to. So know. nobody calls you and says, Connie. No. Yo, Adrian. A little long ago, but no. Okay, no, no. okay. Let me do that. Hit that. All right, uh, we're recording. And who are you with out here? I am staying with. This is not staying with. I'm staying with my best friend from college, Christy. This is so nice. She lives here, and every time I come out, Isn't that nice. With her. Yes. Okay. Oh, all right. We talk don't want to each other. Can't. I know it's a little weird that. because we have to. Now we have to favor. I feel like don't I want worry to about this down don't slightly. Know how to favor? Do you know how to favor? I don't even. I've never even heard Let's the word favor. Tell me what that to. means. Usually, one person goes behind the camera, but that requires editing. Yeah. Go ask me a question. Okay, but I'm going to ask you looking here. But sometimes I'll go back and forth. But look there. All right. Feel free. I'm going to turn you to look there okay, during right. this interview. What is favoring, by the way? Huh? Favoring is that what you said? What you you? Well, you say favor aside. Oh, you want to pull your look. Sometimes. Got it. Okay. All right. It's just a pull of a look. All right. I should take these notes from you. What? I should take these notes from you. No, it's, it's so simple. Let's see, like right about that. Pain is a nice thing. Or over by the doorknob pulls you, but that's too far. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I oh, like oh, it. Oh, gee. Talia Shire. I've been so excited to see you in person. In person. First, we had the phone call. <laughs> what? <laughs> Crazy. A long time ago. But it was a lovely, a lovely interview back then. I remember. I enjoyed you. Thank you. And I enjoyed you. And you were living in your house and, and with just the dogs, right? What, it, then, back then, no, we we were, I, that was during the pandemic, yeah. part of it. Yes, no, I had a small little school downstairs for my grandchildren. Oh, no. okay. And you And many dogs. I, I love dogs. Yes, you sure do, and they're adorable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you remember most about that talk, that, about the interview? Because we've had several talks. Okay. That I liked you. That, because, you know, you have interviews... During that time, there was a working man. There was a movie I did called Working Man. And so that was why the initial yes. reason why we were coming together. But then we kind of explored other things. I was, gee, I like this lady. That was what it was. That's how I thought. And then, you know, I started to know a little bit of your life that there was in your family, the death of an uncle. Mm -hmm. That that. That was big stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was summer of 2020 then. Yeah, that's was, that was our first talk. So that... Mm -hmm. Or one of our talks. Whatever. That's, that's the pandemic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, where we were trying to figure out time mm -hmm. and our families. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Okay, so since then, yes. oh. <laughs> I would like to know one high point in your life and one low point between the time of then and right now? One high point. Look, I, the, the high point for me is that during that period, uh, for me, of the pandemic, I thought people came together and there was a nice humanity. Mm -hmm. I, felt, I felt that. Um, you know, I have grandchildren, I have children, I have to be concerned about their lives. And I felt a, a, an intimacy with my family. I mean, I, you have intimacy with your family, but it was especially beautiful during that period because we were all concerned. Low point, I think, well. <laughs> it's okay, we can cut and, and get back in. This Sorry. is my daughter-in-law over here. Wow. Great to it was nice to meet you, know, you too. She sings. She sings too. She's a great She writes and she sings. Yeah, she's gifted. That was my daughter. Yeah. So she's, she's married to Matthew. Matthew. Okay. Right. Low point. I think for all of us, and I don't yeah. want to become political, but we are an extraordinary country. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us were 
dealing with a certain amount of disillusionment that went on. I don't want to say any more. Okay. Disillusionment, by the way, is how I learn. I've always learned by disillusionment. It's not a terrible thing. I know people will say, gee, that person wasn't that person. But that's okay. Uh -huh. Then you come to forgiveness and you say, well, that person was a teacher. Mm -hmm. And you go on. In a bigger sense, you learn about it in your community. We certainly learned about that with COVID. Yep. We learned about it politically because we were dealing with I mean, really, it's a, a time of transformation. All of us were dealing with tr transformational issues. By the way, I have to say, I totally agree on the, maybe a little different, but I think every low point is a gift because there are struggles with them, but there also are, you have to hit rock bottom sometimes. Oh, you don't agree? Okay, refute me, but let me yeah, finish my whole thing first. Do it. So Speak I it. feel like uh -huh. when you get to a low point in something, mm -hmm. it may take a long, long time, but you will, well, if you are the type of person, mm -hmm. you will learn something very important, huge, that will lift you up to a, to a positive place. Not at all. I know. Now the first thing I'm thinking about is you and, and your husband. Well... That's the first loss, thing I'm thinking of. And that was a loss of, of many years ago. But people, I think, is this, this is sort of God's design. Mm. I think we do. We do have very low points, mm -hmm. right? But out of that, for me, I'm, I'm speaking about my journey. Personally. Right. Came music and art. I use those points always to find... Firstly, a discipline, because you have to have discipline. Mm -hmm. By the way, the word disciple yes. comes from discipline, right? Because when you feel low, where you can't get out of bed. I had a friend who said, I can't get out of bed. I understand that, mm -hmm. right? And you say, I can't get out of bed. And you have to give yourself permission not to get out of bed that day. And then maybe the next day you take your foot, the other, always get dressed in the morning, by the way. Mm. I think it is, life is tough. Life is supposed to be difficult, full of conflicts. It's tough to live. It's some, and I've got arthritis, so it's painful to live. It is tough to live. But if you get those little moments, where you see the light or feel it in your own soul. They're exquisite and very beautiful. But you know, I'm not gonna say it's not tough to live. Right. And even if your moment is great, if you have empathy, you know somebody else is having a real tough time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A tough time. I think almost everybody's having a tough, tough time. time always, and we have to assume that they are. And then how do you live? How right, you but live? you have to know, You just to be empathic, you know, you may think somebody's doing something, you know, that's inconsiderate or whatever else, and they probably are, but everybody is going through something. Two thousand eight. Well, that's the human yeah. journey. Yes. And you embrace that, I think. Yep. But something I knew as a child, I knew this was tough to be alive. I always knew it was tough. Even as a child. Oh, even as a child. When you were sitting in your high chair, because you told me a story remember, about being I mean, in your high chair. I, oh, I was in I my know. high chair, you said. Oh, I was sitting next to my father. God, I remember my high chair. Well, I was always hungry in my high chair. I remember my high chair. But I remember back as a child, you look at an animal, you, you observe, you feel your day more as a yeah. child. You, you're, you are shaping language, right? But I, I always knew, gee, it's tough to, tough to, tough to live. Mm -hmm. And it is. Okay, so high and point, low is. point. And it is. And how about personal high that point? Is, what do you say about that, tough to live? How do you help other people? Because I know you're a therapist. How do you say it is tough to live? Well, that's part of being able to live is to understand that it is. If you think it's supposed to be all joy all the time, okay. you're setting yourself up for disappointment and anger. Anger? Well, anger usually stems from fear. But if you feel, if you feel, 
like it's life's not fair I'm getting the short end of the stick this isn't right why is this happening to me that's the kind of thing that you can that can certainly lead to anger and that's if you think life is supposed to be and part of the all good and part of the problem is that it looks good on the outside you look on social media it looks like everybody's perfectly happy interesting okay social media I have to just cut in here please I can't you know I can't work technology yeah. I am dyslexic right that's a real thing and I was just talking to my children they just left here how do you raise the child who uses social media mm-hmm. how do you do that how do you raise somebody who says I don't exist unless 20 people like me how do you have your own sense uh, of your own self core self mm-hmm. it doesn't matter you know, yeah. If anybody's following you, you exist. I don't know. I, a, I, there I, is. I, I don't know the answer know. either. I Nobody does. Nobody does. But, but, but so people. So here's what I would this? say. Yes. Here's what. Okay, well, well, I can tell you that I, as a parent, tell you what I did okay. or do. Mm-hmm. And you know, two of my kids are a little older, so mm-hmm. they yes, they're on social media, but they didn't get on it when they're young. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're 22 and 20. It's a little different. Mm-hmm. But my 14-year-old will scroll through TikTok. I don't know what TikTok is, but it's... Okay, okay, okay. But he's not posting things to get likes. Okay. So here's what I can say is that you have to tell them... That not, I, get, I don't want to preach what you have to do, but as a parent, I say the things that you already said just now. So they are they already understand growing up it's fake, it makes people feel bad, everything is curated, whatever you see posted that makes things look a certain way, it's on purpose. And so I we also talk about things like likes. This is my prediction on low battery. Let me just stick it's still going. But but it's just I just have to put that in low power mode and that's what I have. Huh? Um, okay, one sec. Okay. <laughs> I'm adjusting. Oh, okay, you're adjusting. Okay. okay. So let me adjust myself too. Okay. So we we also talk about things like I think there won't be likes in the future. I, when we speak of likes, so I'm clear, that's a specific term. Yes. So I don't know that term. I'm going to teach you that term. Uh, because that's what you're saying is you don't exist unless people are telling you on social media. Acknowledging right. so that's, that that's an existential issue the that light has existed is a, through time. Yes. It's a problem. And it is it is through time. But right now, it shows up as likes. So if you put something on social media, let's say it's a picture of you and me, uh-huh. people will put a little like or a heart on it uh, if they like it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're after more likes and hearts. I don't know. I don't. Want, I don't do that. Right. So that I'm teaching. But I know that you're teaching mm. me, which means that some part of your day you go to see if you have any. Lives. Oh, I have to. You have to for work. I do it only for work. Okay. I only post work things. Oh, I mean, okay. I'll put a couple little things of myself so that the people who watch my so, show know me a little sure, better. Sure, your audience. Right. Right. So it's like a, I'm forming a relationship with my audience, but it's really, you know, this is for this mm. is going to go up. So there will be, a, you know, I'll put a pic. Let's pose, ready? And I'll screenshot this. Well, please like us. But <laughs> if you don't, it's okay too. <laughs> I don't look at this, but I like you, and I like you. By the way, that's a social media clip. I'm gonna cut that. I have just no that idea. Thing. idea. And people are gonna, they're gonna see it. And they're gonna laugh. But they think it's great. Well, I have respect for new technologies. Yeah. But I don't think we understand this one yet. No. Not, that's why I said we don't know yet. And we don't know how it shapes young minds at all. Mm-hmm. But there is something about, you know, just being on this planet, being a human being, you're always saying, who made me? How did I get here? So there are moments that are, that's why I love theater and drama and beauty, because it, it's a way to speak. The Greeks spoke to all that confusion a long time ago. So I love theater for that reason. It, it, it speaks to my own uh, journey, but done beautifully, because I, I really love beauty also. Um, I don't understand social media yet, and I'm deeply concerned how it will exist in the future, because young kids 
have a hard time. We know, and I know that there is bullying. That word, I've heard about it. Yeah. You know, my kids are grown, but yeah. to bully, and they and they do it in, uh, on social media. Yeah, privately, oh. So oh, it's, which is worse. Um, it's I'm worse, not. really, privately on social media. If they What's bully privately I, on social media, you're public. Right? It is public. Privately is the wrong word. It's um, yeah. online, meaning not in front of, not in school, not where the teachers can do anything about it. It's that's what I mean. It's more powerful almost and worse because just it's at a time online. when you're vulnerable. Yes, and that's the whole history mm -hmm. of mankind. Is when you're vulnerable, mm -hmm. there are people who will spot that and take advantage of it. Cults. I'm obsessed with cults. There are all these TV shows on cults, and I'm like, cult. you know what a cult? You know what a cult is? C U L T. Yes. And I, hey, look at the spelling. See? I, I, and I'm just like, I know. C -U -L -T. That's why I was giving. Well, you want to belong at yeah. a time when you're vulnerable. when you have no idea, and, and when you're leaving your family, you have to figure where you can go that will embrace your confusion. Usually, it's confusion that attracts you to a cult. Fascinating. Okay, I'm getting right. way off topic, which well, is fun no, for me. that is what, uh, okay, let's It's get fun off for topic. me. This is why yeah. I say I could have set up my regular equipment no, and we no, could no, easily because, uh, no. talked about the world for hours. So I'll, I'll okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to bring us back around and say, I was going to ask you for a personal high point and low point. You did since, ask me for a high point. And not high. about society, about you personally, in your personal life? Lately. Lately? Yeah. Lately. Meaning the last couple of years. Or the last, let's say the last three You years. know, it's always related for me to some act of beauty. Uh -huh. It just is. I could put on, and, and it's, sometimes it's Bach, a piece of music, and I go, and it happens. Who was this guy, Bach? <laughs> oh my God, what am I hearing? That's a high point for me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I did that just just a few weeks ago. How about a low point? A low, po low point, you know, I... I... I think it's a deep sadness for me when uh, when these shootings take place. That's a low point for me. I mean, I, I, what do I have? How many years left do I have to live? My God, is, is this seeing people hurt, seeing random shootings, it did, it, acts of violence? Mm -hmm. They hurt me. Mm -hmm. They hurt me. Uh, and I feel it deeply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, it, deep sadness when I see these things take place. You know? You really feel all the emotions in life. I I, I'm, like. I'm, I'm a, I'm, I, I think we, God gave us this body for actors. This is called an instrument, and we inhabit this instrument with our feeling nature, and we play that part of this part of this part. And that's not bad, but we also, all of us, are, are living this life, so when we see on the news, gee whiz, the, uh, uh, you know, when we see an earthquake when we, in Turkey, how can you not, uh, not feel? What, what what's taking place mm -hmm. and that's you want to call it low you can um, desperate incredibly tragic you feel that painful don't you feel that yes of oh course. boy God. okay mm. I have to I have to figure out a segue that's not as tragic. Okay. Um, this is gonna be a weird segue, but I'm gonna go oh, right into it. Do you have a segue? Segways. <laughs> the segue. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. The segue is what is this movie you've been going to Atlanta for? Well, I can't speak about it. 
Oh, you can't say no, what it is? I can't. Not at this time. Let's go back, not back. I actually, I'm getting ready to do a movie that Nick Vallelonga, remember Green Book? Yes. That is a movie I am the artist, Nick, Nick Vallelonga, incredible creative uh, artist. Uh, he's preparing a movie and I'm, I'm getting ready to, to do it. Yay, I'm so excited. People want to see you on the screen. We want to see you on the screen always, well, regularly. I, I do, uh, let me, I do other things too. I have done other things. Acting is something I can do. I don't think I'm great, but it's something I could do. It's the way, the way I, dramatic literature is, is spectacular for me. It, it, it's always been. Uh, oh God, who wrote Oedipus? Talk about a tough life. But um, it's always focused me. But I always wanted to do more. With Jack Schwartzman, my late husband, we had a production company. We did Never Say Never Again. The last Bond movie with Sean Connery and several other movies. And that was an exciting, exciting time for me to work with other writers, find a project, option a book, right? That was uh, uh, the direction that okay. I was exploring. When will you, your new movie come out? Like a year or two? 20 years from Okay, now. 20 years from now. It could be a whole... What's it called? Of, no, no. The, 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 well, the movie with Nick, I think, will come back. And you know, it's with John Travolta. John, I hope you're, you're in. <laughs> it's okay. Another good thing, John oh, Travolta. Well. Yeah. How was he? I haven't met him, but oh, okay, I can't okay. wait to work with, with him. Uh, but also, I have my uh, own projects. Yeah. And you know, I, I write poetry, so my hope is to. It's very tough. Uh, to, you know, I'm rewriting all my poetry, and it, so you look at a word, you look at a rhythm, you weigh the word. You say, "Oh my!" You speak the word. You see the word. You say, "God, that's the wrong word," mm. and you have to. Keep working. It's it's tough, mm -hmm. and I love it. You know, I love writing poetry. Right now, that that's a my focus. Okay. What can I tell Rocky fans who adore you? I can tell you that recently, oh, people have God. reached out to me because they found our interview years later, and are thrilled to have seen you and me talking about so much. So what can I tell them Can I about talk about Rocky for a second? Of course. That what? first movie was, was a joy. I, I, you know, one of the, you know, you, it's tough to audition. I have a problem auditioning. I go to an audition, I'm so afraid I fall asleep. That's the truth. I thought, that audition, I remember, and there was something magical about it. And I got the job, that rarely happens, right? I, you know, you go, I think I, d I did that right. And boy, I have to say, I felt the uh, creative collaboration and partnership with John Avelson and Sylvester Stallone. It was wonderful. And it's important for me, for me to say this, Rocky on the page it was beautiful. It was poetry. This was a brilliantly written script by Sylvester Stallone. He wrote Adrian. He wrote this wonderful, shy uh, girl who's dismissed, but because she is loved, becomes a great partner. Partner, equal partner. He wrote that. I just have to say that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God. You know, talk about it. Talk about how the gods came and gave you a job. That was something that was special. Job. That was special. Yeah. Okay. So, how are you doing now? I, they're going to want to know how is Talia now? Writing poems, uh, loving my children, adoring my grandchildren, which are en endlessly here. 
and teaching from time to time because I love to to, to teach. Mm -hmm. You know, love it. That um, reminded me also yeah. because remember we talked about when I was getting going to get back to live interview shows mm -hmm. on stage with an audience. You wanted that, I, yeah, yeah. And I think it's about you time to do it. I, I couldn't do that. I always felt like I was shy, and then this show has broken me out of broken me out of my shell. It's like I don't know what happened, but I think I was always like meant to do this what I do, and I feel like more of myself, and I feel so connected. I did one show, and no, I did a few, but the first show I did was with you know him, Michael Imperioli. We yeah. we talked well, about him, right? Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Yes. So we did this live show. It was his idea, by the way. He's the one who said, you should do this in front of an audience. So I said, okay, do it with me. So we did one, January 2020. And I, right before, I was so nervous. Nervous. And I'm not a nervous person by That's nature. That's creative energy. Oh, I was like, why did I do this? Why did I do this? And then this is leading up to it. And then even when I arrived that day, I was a nervous wreck. I'm rehearsing my little intro. And then as soon as Michael arrived, I was fine. Because I realized it's just me and Michael having a talk, which is my favorite thing to do. And then I just totally relax. Yes, but for many people. Yeah, so it's, for it's many not people, just yeah. a yeah. it's a big yeah. big talk. Yeah. Right. So queer. We're gonna talk. do we have to do one, you and me. You know, would when you I do say I shine, I'm I I'm always you said you would before. So that, but that was before before the before. I'm always reluctant to do uh, my dogs. Somebody's here. <laughs> These are dogs. No. I'm always reluctant to do certain things, but I would happily explore this with you. Okay, let's. That's a. We'll talk more about that we'll maybe this more. summer. Yes, when I, will, I when I will want to talk. About right, it. right. Okay. So back to okay. So how about now? We talked about Rocky. Of course, we can't say nothing about The Godfather, even though we talked oh, about the it Godfather, in depth. Godfather, please, masterwork, masterwork. Yeah. Master. I mean, you're not going to, no, I'm not going to argue with that statement. See, you have, and I, you know, Francis Coppola, people don't realize, is my brother. And I think he is the world's greatest living director. He's smart. Yeah. He's poetic. He's extraordinary. He's intense. He's a great creative soul. And, um, of the things he has made and the many people, by the way, he's discovered. He discovered George Lucas. He always, he loves to nurture talent. Other people's talent. That's very exciting mm -hmm. to him. He's a teacher. Also, The Outsiders. Oh. 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 Love, 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 love. Oh. Love. Oh. I watched it again. I hadn't seen it in years. My son. How old were you when you saw that the first time? You must have been a kid. Yeah, I was either middle school yeah. or high, early high school, I would think. Yeah, I bet yeah. maybe early high school. But uh -huh. my son was reading The Outsiders uh, in school and then watched the movie. And I remember saying, oh, I just love, 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 whatever. And then we're on, we, were fl we were flying home this summer from vacation. And there was The Outsiders. And I watched it on the plane. And it's very hard for me to enjoy a movie on the plane, mm -hmm. but I was crying and I was like, oh, The Outsiders was so And all good. that young talent. Yeah. All that young all talent. All that young talent. Yeah. In that movie. Yes. So that was a big success. Also, totally different from the Godfather films and all the others, Apocalypse. Now, whatever well, else. He wanted to tell a story of yeah. young people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, still how, holds up. Look, hold all of his movies hold up. Don't well, they? he's a master artist. Uh -huh. So I want. I mean, I pretend I'm just. We're just sitting here, and we hear Francis Coppola might have another piece that he's working on. I I would rush to see it. I have heard that news. In fact. <laughs> I hear there, and it's all, it, it is in the news, it's not unknown, that there is a new movie in the works. And that and it's going to be to epic. Yes. So, and I want you, that. I want 
and now I'm not speaking as a sister, I'm speaking as an artist who knows how hard it is. And as somebody in, in film and movies, gee, it's awfully hard to get a movie on. It costs so much money to make it, to do it. The logistics are extraordinary. Uh, I, I want to see anything Francis Coppola makes. Anything. Same. Okay, can you tell us anything about that movie? No. Mom's the word? Not mom. Will you tell us later when it's legit well, to we talk move about closer. it? Okay, yeah, okay. But I think it's it. enough to say that this is a master director and has decided to go back after some years, right? Uh huh. It, and it's. I'm excited to see okay. what he is going to create. I accept. Okay. Now, the people are surprised to hear that Francis Ford Coppola is your brother. Right. I bet they also don't realize the other family members that you have who are famous and don't have your last name. Right. We, we, well, look, we're, we're a circus family. Yeah. We've done this for over a hundred years. We make movies, write music, grandpa, Francesco Panino was a pretty fine composer, played the piano, you know, for Caruso. Anyway, and he wrote plays mm -hmm. uh, way over 100 years ago. So we've always been doing this. Always. Right. So it's no surprise that that would happen, but I'm going to name some because okay. they don't know who we're talking about. All right. Nicolas Cage. That's, that's my nephew. From my oldest brother, August Coppola, a great educator who's passed away, but really was my teacher and Francis's teacher. Extraordinary. Do you see Nick Cage often? Sure. And, he's, and, and I love, not often enough, because you know he's been off making a lot of movies, but boy, what a, a talent that man is. People are intrigued by him, too, because he is unique. Totally. Totally unique. Totally. But, but elegant. And awful. Nothing is uh, is just chaotic. It's all picked. It's all beautifully shaped. What he does. Okay. Jason Schwartzman. That's my son. Yeah. That's my son. And he started with Rushmore uh, as a young man. And and Robert Schwartzman. We're all in this. We're all in this business. John Schwartzman is a terrific cinematographer. He's my stepson. So this is kind of what we do, and um, we're proud that we do this thing, which is we make movies or we'll put on shows. I would love to sit at your Thanksgiving table. <laughs> I mean, what? This is a this is a fascinating family you're surrounded by and part of, and a, and a significant you know an important element of more than an element. And the thing about my brother August used to say, not spoiled, uh -huh. hard working. Uh -huh. Nobody gets a free ride in this family. You have to step up, bring your craft and your discipline, and it's tough. It's tough because sometimes the outside world will uh, project on on it. But you know, our family's been like a hundred and twenty years of. You know, my grandfather's writing name was Nino Penn. Some of his plays were under Nino Penn okay. and his poetry. So it's always we've always uh, we've always done this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and you're frankly, I would have. I mean, I would prefer to be a doctor or a lawyer. But that didn't happen. Was you really? I played a doctor and I played a lawyer or something. But I. This is. This is what uh, I do, mm -hmm. and I think we teach. We teach through this theater. The theater was always about speaking about your life, the things you couldn't say, having a catharsis. So it's a teaching, it's an extraordinary teaching tool, theater, mm -hmm. right? And so beautiful. So in a way, I, I wouldn't mind being a teacher, that would be a great thing. In a way, we teach through what we do. That's important right now on this planet. Okay. Mm -hmm. My last question oh. is the same question I probably asked you last time. But what? you were so nice last time. Okay. Am I not it's being nice? Sweet. Yes, time. you are, but you know you're not. 
No, but it's scary, you know, to, to have interviews. You always must. Is it scary? Tell me about that. You tell me about it. Would you enjoy exploring? Well, that's I part of what like we I do. Would. You would. I feel like I get it, and I always, I, not always, but I love to ask people afterwards, mm -hmm. and so you're going to give me insight. Okay. I, for me, I always want my guest, my show guest, mm -hmm. or whoever I'm talking to, even if it's not on the show, I want them to feel good about this. us, our interaction, this. Right. I want them to feel good. Because no it's a moment of intimacy. Yeah. And you should feel solid and confident that you're going to share this moment. Right. I trust that person to have I also know mm -hmm. that I am not famous like you are, so there's more at stake for you than for me. So I, I try to put myself in your hands, in your position, not your hands, in your position to understand what you may be feeling. Look, I'm an older person in this industry. I'm not... Uh, a consequence of what we do is, mm -hmm. is fame. I'm not sure what that is, and, but it's useful to get the next project mm -hmm. on, right? But it's not, it should never be why you're doing this. Ever, 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 ever. Because it distorts. It distorts being a person, a mother, mm -hmm. going to the market. It distorts that. And what I like to do, it, 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 loving theater, dramatic arts, is to be with people and to feel them deeply, not have a distortion of fame. Well, that's me too. That's why I do what I do. Ah, just because you want to... to feel them. It's because you are them. Yeah. We are yeah. each other. That's good. I like that. No, we are. Yeah. The other is you. The partner is yourself. I, True. You know, you, know, let, you know who told me that? Stella Adler. Great teacher of drama, great actress. She was Marlon Brando's teacher, and I have great reverence for her. But I called her up one night, because we were we were close. I said, Stella, how the seed is so hard. And she said, remember, the partner is yourself. I understood. And that's for acting. And for me as a therapist, that is the advice I give. I like to give because it says it all. You're gonna you're gonna be there for you and with you for your entire life. No matter ups, downs, highs, lows, all of it, you're gonna always be with yourself. So be there for yourself. Yes. Okay. I have a side. I have a side question that okay. you just brought up. Right. When you go to the market, do you get recognized? Do people know oh, no. it's you? No. No. Okay. No. Why do you say I'm a character actor? I'm. You're not supposed to. So you know, nobody calls you and says, "Connie, no. you Adrian." Long ago, but no. Okay. No, no. Okay. All right. Back to my question. Yes. Another well, question. This, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. What is a common misconception about you? I don't, so I'm not sure about misconception because I'm not so. My world is my family. Um, and I think it's a little bit that I'm very shy. But that is that shyness or just uh, sensitivity? So I think it's that I'm. Mm. I, it's, a, it's that I'm. Not, I'm not totally shy. I think it, 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 it's that. Okay. And. Who is Talia Shire? Ah, okay. Who can say? Life is not static. We're constantly moving along, human beings. We're always moving. There's no moment in time where you say, I, I know who that is, never. And if that ever happens, you're in trouble. Did we do okay? I think so. I think so who too. Who are you? You know but isn't that true? Love it. But is that not true? Yes, you can't know who you are. Yep. Forgive yourself for never knowing really who you are. But love that whole journey. 
I firmly believe the older I get, the more I change, but the more I also come back to who I am, the essence of who That's I am. That's the core. Part. The core. That's it. The core. And I don't know how to define that core. I just know when it's there, I can see it and feel it in myself. That, I'm with I, me. I think that's the higher, you don't always mm -hmm. get this, but I think there's a higher, I know there's a higher self. There's something big and beautiful and transcendent, but we gotta get up. We gotta pay our bills. We have to deal with the dog that has an, it's a very interesting thing to be alive. It's like, um, what is that, Maslow's hierarchy? You know what I'm talking about? I know Maslow. So yes, like the Maslow's first to the bottom, the foundation, you have to eat, sleep, sleep. have shelter. shelter. Yeah. Right. And then as you go up, relationships, whatever. I don't remember well, what's love, in the middle. Higher love. love. And that top is self-actualization. Well, self-actualization. And I think you have that as a child. Uh-huh. Where, oh God, yeah, yeah. I'm all these people. And somebody is to say, no, you're not that, but you know, you have to learn to be separate in order to finally have that great reach where you feel you're part of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I think this is good. Sometimes I like to end on something, I don't know, just different or whatever, but I feel like um, I, need to, I need to say one more thing, or we need to say one more thing. Um, will you ever talk to me again? Yes. We'll plan it. We'll plan it better. We'll plan it. Well, I got oh, but, but this was fun. Was it not? How should we end? Let's end. They, we will meet at the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> In one year. And ask the big questions about life. I'm there. I'm there. One, two, three.